Hi everyone and thank you for joining another video of this computer network series. So I actually feel like I've owed you this video for quite a long time, actually a few years. So back when I recorded the Ethernet series I had this video in the making and I didn't produce it for some reason and thank you to everyone who reminded me like Nadav and Ben for reminding me recently uh, that I should still upload this video so after learning every bit and byte in the Ethernet protocol it's time to look at what actual frames look like when we sniff them on the wire in Wireshark so let's get right to it okay so I'm sniffing now and one fun fact to notice is that I'm actually using a wireless network interface so I'm actually sniffing Wi-Fi. However, for reasons I don't really want to dwell into right now, modern operating systems usually look at Wi-Fi network as Ethernet network. So they convert the Wi-Fi layer into Ethernet so that for the operating system, it all looks the same. So if we look right now, right here, it says Wi-Fi, but it's actually Ethernet, as we'll see in a moment when we look at the different frames. So I'm going to stop the recording and it doesn't really matter which frame I'm going to look at now. They're all going to be Ethernet. I might not know if it's Ethernet type 2 or 802.3, but it's going to be Ethernet. So let's consider this one, for example. What do we see here? When it comes to the five layers model, we see as the second layer, we don't really see the first layer, right? Because it's just ones and zeros. When we look at the second layer with its Ethernet 2. How does Wireshark know that? Well, I hope you recall from the previous video that when we look at the type or length field, a value that is greater or equal to 1536 actually means type. A value that is lower than or equal to 1500 means that it's a length field and then it's Ethernet 802.3. So let's double click here. So we can see that the Ethernet layer consists of various fields. We see here the destination address that I hope you recall that this is how the frame actually starts, then the source address, and then the type, in this case, IPv4. Before we consider each field separately, recall that we said that the Ethernet frame actually starts with a preamble, alternating ones and zeros. Now, the reason that you don't see those here is that it's not really considered part of the frame. For a frame to start, the clocks have to synchronize between this machine, the receiving machine, and the sending machine. So we use the alternating ones and zeros for that, as we explained in the previous video. What we see now is that the actual frame starts in the destination field, so you don't see the preamble in Wireshark. There is one more thing you don't see here, which is the checksum that we said that follows the frame. So it's going to be here, after the third layer, in this case, it's IPv4, and then the fourth layer, in this case, TCP, and then whatever comes after that. So we're supposed to see four bytes of CRC32 in the case of Ethernet. So why don't we see it here? Any guesses? Well, the reason is that if the frame had a wrong checksum, then Wireshark wouldn't even receive it because the network interface would discard this frame for having an invalid checksum. This is a check that actually happens in the network card before the frame is transferred to Wireshark. Good, so what do we see here? So two addresses here. The first is the destination address, and the second is the source address. If we look at the address, we'll see the two special bits. So if you remember the secondly significant bit in the most significant byte, here, I'm marking it in red. So this is the global local bit. So having zero here means it's a globally unique address that is factory default, not something set by, say, the IT guy. So this is the second least significant bit. Maybe later we'll see if in this sniff I got to see a frame where an address has this bit set to one, and we'll see how we do that. The other interesting bit here is that of an individual address that is a unicat. This is the least significant bit in the most significant byte. And this means that the frame is destined to a specific unicast address that is a specific entity in the network, rather than, say, a group of multiple network cards. 
Now, mm -hmm. in the source address in this case, we can actually see the split between the three most significant bytes. Mm -hmm. These ones, which correspond to DC7196 in this case, which mm -hmm. tells what manufacturer manufactured this network interface. In this case, it's Intel. And the least most significant bytes, which are the host ID. In this case, 1ABF26. These two fields, the destination and source address, are then followed by a type. In this case, IPv4, hex value of 800. Don't be confused with the decimal value. The hex value of 800 is greater than the decimal value of 1535. Thus, this is a type rather than a length field. So what we see here is an Ethernet 2 frame and not 802.3. If you need a reminder about those different fields and bits, please check the previous videos where we covered them in depth. Now, say we want to check if we have any frame in this sniff where we don't actually have this bit set to zero, but rather set to one. So we want a multicast or broadcast. So multicast is a group, broadcast is a specific group that is the group that includes all entities in the network. If I want to see a frame with the destination address where the this bit is set to one, and we probably don't expect to see any frame coming from a source address of a multicast address, right? That doesn't really make sense. So we can right click here, and this is a trick we already saw in a previous video about Wireshark. So I'm using right click, and now I'm going to go to apply as filter. And instead of saying selected, I'm going to say not selected. So I don't want frames where the ethernet.destination.ig. So we'll look here, apply as filter, not selected. And well, we do have one. So if I click on it and we go to the destination address, we'll see in this case, it's really the broadcast address. So both of these bits are set to one. And as you can see, Wireshark even tells us, so this bit is set to one. It means that this is a group address, multicast or broadcast address. And if it's a multicast address, then this bit doesn't really mean anything special. I mean, you can't really have a multicast address that was globally unique, as in someone actually manufactured it. So it's a locally administered address. Again, not really meaningful in case of a broadcast address. And again, the type is IP before. I expect we won't really see other types in this sniff, but if I want to check if there are other Ethernet frames without IPv4, can I do that? Well, of course I can. Let's click on this field, right click, apply its filter, and again, I'm going to select not selected. Oh, so in this case, we have two ARP frames. We'll talk more in depth about the ARP, ARP when we discuss the third layer. So this is a different type and you can actually see it here, right? So we see that the type is ARP, the actual value is 806 in hexadecimal base rather than the 800 we saw for IP before. Cool, so this was Ethernet 2. Now to show you Ethernet 802.3, I actually need to show you a different sniff that I sniffed a long time ago when I prepared this video originally when it was in a network that actually has specific network devices, namely switches specifically, as uh, we're covering in the next video, video 3.7, that actually sent 802.3 traffic. So let's switch to that other snip. So here we see a frame from a protocol called STP or spanning tree protocol is a protocol between switches. And we can see Wireshark recognizes that this is IEEE 802.3. And the way Wireshark is able to do that is that the type or length field is set to 39. So a length of 39, a type length field of a value lesser than or equal to 1500, means that this is 802.3. And again, you see all the rest is the same. We have the destination address, a group address, a multicast address, which is the address of all switches, also called bridges, spanning tree bridges. And for the source, you see both special bits set to zero. So this is a globally unique address by Cisco, and it's a unicast address. We see Cisco as the first three most significant bytes, 
belong to Cisco, that is the vendor ID. We can also see that after the length, which is set to 39, we have heading. So because this frame only consists of 39 bytes of data, we need more padding to get to the minimum size of 46 bytes of data for an Ethernet frame. Afterwards, we have the LLC. So we mentioned that in case of 802.3, we have LLC protocol, which allows us to see the type of the payload of the Ethernet frame. 